Good morning. Good morning. Finally, uh, nice to see everybody. Yeah. Uh, thank you for attending. First of all, I'd like to apologize uh, between a lack of miscommunication on my part. We didn't have the uh, marching band, so but we will have them on Veterans Day. So on this day is sacred with the almost visible presence of those who gave have gone before us. We honor the memory of those who gave their lives in the service of our country and for those others who have dropped their, dropped their burdens by the wayside of life and have gone to eternal rest. May the ceremonies of today deepen our reverence for our departed friends and comrades. Let us renew our pledge for loyalty to our country and its flag. Let us resolve by word and deed and emphasize the privilege of duty and patriotism. Have an opening prayer. Gracious Father, we thank you for the opportunity to be here. The solemn occasion as we remember, reflect, and honor those that went before us. Those that laid themselves down as a sacrifice to provide the freedoms that we enjoy today. We take this time out of our day. We take this time out of, out of all of the activities of this world to stand together in this public place and publicly honor and remember those that paid the ultimate price. We thank you for them, for their service, for their selflessness. We pray for their families that have been left behind. We ask that you would watch over, protect, keep, and comfort them, and that you would help us to live lives that are honoring to the sacrifice that was made. Thank you for this great country, for our leaders, for our military. We ask that you would protect and watch over them. For these things I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.
Uh, usually at this time we have the band play the national anthem, but my stand-in. And if you all want to join in, please be sure. Thanks. If you know this, please help me. <laughs> all right? Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> you now have the reading of the Gettysburg Address from Hunter Lehman. Four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth on this continent a new nation conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. Now we are engaged in a great civil war testing whether that nation or any nation so conceived and so dedicated can long endure. We are met on a great battlefield of that war. We have come to dedicate a portion of that field as a final resting place for those who here gave their lives that that nation might live. It is altogether fitting and proper that we should do this. But, in a larger sense, we cannot dedicate, we cannot consecrate, we cannot hallow this ground. The brave men, living and dead, who struggled here have consecrated it far above our poor power to add or detract. The world will little know nor long remember what we say here, but it can never forget what they did here. It is for us, the living, rather to be dedicated here to the unfinished work of which they, have <coughs> they, they who fought here have thus far so nobly advanced. It is rather for us to be here dedicated to the great task remaining before us that from these honored dead we take increased devotion to that cause for which they gave the last full measure of devotion that we that we here highly resolve that these dead shall not have died in vain that this nation under god shall have a new birth of freedom that the government of the people, by the people, for the people, shall not perish from this earth. Yahoo! Now we have some comments from Gary Williams. Welcome. 
The USS New York, one of our military's most advanced and prolific warships, it was launched December 19, 2007. It's an amazing vessel. The thing that makes it amazing is it is it was constructed with 45 tons of steel from the World Trade Center 2001. Typically only submarines are named after states. The governor then, George Pataki, petitioned the military to make an exception for this vessel. The Secretary of the Navy granted that request and this ship was named the USS New York. It carries a crew of 360 sailors and 700 combat-ready Marines. They're ready to be deployed by helicopter, by assault craft. The steel from that World Trade Center was melted down in a foundry in Amite, Louisiana. And the workers in that foundry had utmost respect and every time one of those pieces of steel was brought by every one of those workers walked by and touched it the factory was in complete silence except for the whirring of the machinery the ship's motto is never forget never forget some may take that motto as meaning that we hold a grudge but i want to focus on one thought that if we forget our past, as has been said, we are likely that history will repeat itself. I, for one, never want to forget the blood that was shed so I can enjoy the freedoms that I have now. Almost 700,000 soldiers have died in combat, 1.3 million total in wars. That is an incredible number for such a young nation. I never want to forget those that have lost sons and daughters, husbands, mothers, fathers, for the freedom that we enjoy this morning. And there are many that may say, well, what freedom? Coming out of 2020, probably one of the worst years in, in our recent memory. Sure, our country is far from perfect. We're declining in morality every day. We have a never-ending list of faults and failures in our nation. But instead of focusing on what's wrong, let's take a moment and be thankful for what we have and remember why we have it. In the midst of all of the wickedness and unethical politics and violence and our foundations being attacked, we still have freedom. We still have the blessing this morning that millions of people around this world don't have. We're able to freely gather in this place this morning. We're able to worship. We can run our own businesses, own our own property, freely travel. These things we often take for granted, but they were paid for with blood. Our flag stands for freedom, the freedom that we enjoy. It stands for those that have given their lives in sacrifice. It even stands so that some could say, I disagree. We are so blessed to have the capacity to remember. Even though it becomes more challenging the older we get. Memorial Day started many years ago, originally called Decoration, Dec Decoration Day. In April 1863, in Columbus, Mississippi, after decorating the graves of her two sons, An observer asked, what are you doing? Those are the graves of two Union soldiers. Her reply was, I know. I also know that somewhere in the North, a mother or a young wife mourns for them as we do for ours. This lady and a few others set in motion what became known as Memorial Day. We observe all kinds of days. We put days on the calendar. We set them apart to remember. We have traditions, Christmas and Easter, things that make them special. July 4th, September 11th, in the next couple of weeks I'll be working and preparing for many memorial services for first responders and public workers. And we'll be in Class A uniforms. You see many here in uniforms today. And even though none of the names that we have seen on these memorial stones, most of them we don't know. We didn't know. And they're names of people that can't hear us right now. We set aside time to show the highest respect 
in this tradition of remembering them. I'm going to close with a story from Paul Harvey. Some of you older people may remember that name. Some of you younger, like, is that a rock group? Or... <laughs> he said it was with gratitude that prompted an old man to visit an old broken pier on the eastern seacoast of Florida. Every Friday night until his death in 1973, he would return, walking slowly and slightly stooped with a large bucket of shrimp. The seagulls would flock to this old man and he would feed them from his bucket. Many years before, in October 1942, Captain Eddie Rickenbacker, one of the nation's most respected and dedicated pilots, was on a mission in a B-17 to deliver a top secret message to General Douglas MacArthur in New Guinea. Somewhere over the South Pacific, the Flying Fortress had an instrument malfunction, causing their aircraft to become lost beyond the reach of radio. The plane eventually ran out of fuel, so the men ditched their plane in the ocean. For 24 days, Captain Eddie and the seven other survivors would fight the water, weather, and the scorching sun. They spent many sleepless nights recoiling as giant sharks rammed their rafts. They stored and drank rainwater while Eddie took command and browbeat his men into keeping their spirits up. But of all their enemies at sea, one proved most formidable, starvation. Eight days out, their rations were long gone or destroyed by the salt water. It would take a miracle to sustain them, and a miracle occurred. Something landed on my head. I knew that it was a seagull. I don't know how I knew, I just knew. Everyone else knew, too. No one said a word. But peering out from under my hat brim, without moving my head, I could see the expression on their faces. They were staring at that gull, and that gull meant food, if I could catch it. The rest, they say, is history. Captain Eddie caught the gull and divided it among them. Parts were used for bait to catch fish. The military gave up the search after a little more than two weeks, but Eddie's wife persisted them to keep going a little longer. The men were found after 24 days floating on a raft, emaciated, dehydrated, sunburned, but alive. The survivors were sustained and their hopes were renewed because of a lone seagull, uncharacteristically, hundreds of miles from land, offered itself as a sacrifice. Eddie never forgot, because every Friday evening about sunset on a lonely stretch along the eastern Florida seacoast, you could see an old man walking, white-haired, bushy eyebrowed, slightly bent. His bucket was filled with shrimp to feed the gulls to remember that one which on a long day past gave itself without a struggle. Just as Eddie Rickenbacker never forgot the gull that gave his life, we should never forget the soldiers of our country who gave their lives. Eddie got a second chance in life, and because many brave men and women have died in the armed services fighting for our country's freedom, we have a chance at life, the life of freedom. Both freedom and life never come without a price. The blood of many sons, brothers, fathers, fine soldiers paid for this freedom that we have today. Our country's soldiers died so that we could have a life of freedom. This morning I'd like to close this time with a word of prayer if you would join me. Father, we stand here humbly right now in remembrance of those that have gone on. Those that stepped into the theater of war, into conflict, that stood between us and our enemies. They protected us with their very lives. Today we gather here with solemn hearts as we remember and we give thanks for what they've given to us. Help us, God, not to squander it. Help us, Lord, not to take it for granted, but every day to remember the price that was paid for our freedom. Again, God, we ask that you would comfort the families that have experienced loss. Provide for and protect them, we pray. 
In Jesus' name, amen. amen. We will now have taps in which we will conclude our services. Again, thank you for everybody for showing up, for those participating in the parade. The parade will now reform and head to the Melbourne BFW. Oh, <laughs> no. 